डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन एनाटॉमी ऑफ द लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन नाउ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू फ्यू स्टडी नोट्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस स्टडी नोट्स यू कैन प्रिपेयर बोथ द टॉपिक्स for the large intestine that is the anatomy of the large intestine and the histology of the large large intestine so this lecture is for anatomy of the large intestine and the next lecture <coughs> will be for the histology of the large intestine so i'm showing you so this way this then this then this way then this is the histology of large intestine and this is for shortcut trick lovers then this way this page okay then this is large intestine this color enhance contrast x-ray of large intestine now your exam medical entrance examination the institute who frame your syllabus medical council of india your syllabus implemented in the year 2013 this is unit 4 human physiology and name <coughs> of your chapter digestion and absorption where this topic belongs so this topic belongs to elementary canal so now we are starting this presentation lecture first point <clears throat> okay large intestine objective describe anatomy histology and functions of the large intestine so you need to study all this three aspect anatomy histology and function of large intestine now what is large intestine so large intestine is the terminal portion of gi tract so it is the end part or or the final portion of the gi tract we know the gi tract it start with our mouth that is buccal cavity then pharynx then <clears throat> the esophagus then the stomach 
the small intestine and after the small intestine the large intestine is present so that's why it is the terminal portion of the GI tract so in the figure I am showing you this so here you see here this small intestine is shown and after that the large intestine begins now the functions of the large intestine so completion of absorption the process of absorption is completed in the large intestine then large intestine also produces some vitamins then in the large intestine fecus is formed and from our body we expel out the fecus so that process of removal of fecus is performed by the large intestine this is the position where the large intestine is present in the body now the second point now I am showing you this figure the entire large intestine is shown all the parts then this figure so second point and the second point is regarding the measurement of large intestine <coughs> the length of large intestine 1.5 meter that is 5 feet long the large intestine is and the diameter of large intestine 6.5 centimeter that is 2.5 inch that is the diameter third point from where the large intestine begins so it starts from it extends from the ilium and we know ilium is the third or the last part of the small intestine so from the ilium the large intestine begin so here in the figure you can see this one this one is the ilium and ilium is opening into the large intestine so from here from here this is the large intestine this is the large intestine <coughs> so now moving on the fourth point Now, the large intestine is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by its mesocolon. So, with the help of mesocolon, the large intestine is attached to posterior abdominal wall. And what is mesocolon? So, mesocolon is the double layer of the peritoneum so here this blue color part this portion is the mesocolon and what this mesocolon of the large intestine is doing so it is attaching large intestine to the abdominal wall so I am zooming out so you can observe this figure you can go through this figure now in biology many a times you will come across this name many a times in many many topics these names are going to be repeated greater momentum lesser momentum uh, the ligament this palky form uh, then this uh, 
mesocolon, peritoneum. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you three page from the book and here you see this topic is important very important but I am not going to deliver the lecture on peritoneum the reason is one reason is that that this topic is not included in your syllabus and the second reason is even if I make a lecture on this peritoneum uh, no one is going to watch this lecture because it is not included <coughs> in the syllabus so you can understand this point and but since this topic is important and many a time it is going to <coughs> repeated in many topics all the histology anatomy you will find this terminologies so you read this for example parietal peritoneum visceral peritoneum <coughs> peritoneal cavity then the retro peritoneal that's why i'm telling you here then greater romantum falciform ligament lesser romantum then this figure give a minute <clears throat> then this this page okay you read this entire information now moving on our discussion of this lecture we have completed up to four point now fifth point we are discussing let's reach there to the fifth point <clears throat> this page then Now, fifth page, uh, fifth point. Structurally, there are four major regions in the large intestine, or we can say we can divide the entire large intestine into four regions, and this region are cecum, colon, rectum, and anal canal. So here. In the figure this part this one is the cecum then this is the colon this is also colon then this is the colon okay then this one is the colon okay then rectum this one is the rectum and finally the anal canal so we can divide large intestine structurally into four major region and this region are cecum colon rectum and anal canal so here you see these are the functions of large intestine i am showing you the entire figure So if you are if you prepare this figure this figure is covering all the theory points of the lecture now the sixth point now here they are talking about one wall and where this wall is present and what is the name of the wall Okay, so the name of wall is iliocecal spincher, and what this spincher is made up of? So it is made up of mucous membrane. Where it is present? So here you see 
in this figure the terminal part or the final part of the small intestine is the ileum now from the back side ileum you can understand the ileum is opening into large intestine so this is the opening this is the this one is the opening of ileum into large intestine and this opening is guarded by a wall the name of this wall is ileocecal sphincter this sphincter is made up of mucous membrane and what is going to happen with the help of this wall so this wall is actually guarding the food digested food material when they are entering into the large intestine so when the wall is open the digested food material from the small intestine it can pass into the large intestine so that is the role uh, this ileo sickle spincher is playing okay so this is the sixth point of our discussion moving on the seventh point now the <coughs> so in the seventh point we are discussing about the cecum first of all i am showing you the cecum where which part is the cecum so this entire region this entire region is the cecum and what is cecum where it is present so first of all from the ileocecal wall a small pouch is hanging inferiorly and the pouch which is small and which is hang hanging from the ileocecal wall that small pouch is known as the cecum and the length of this pouch is 6 cm that is 2.4 in so cecum is 2.4 in long then the eighth point <coughs> we are discussing about the vermiform appendix now what is vermiform appendix so here you can see the vermiform appendix is attached to the cecum it is connected to the cecum and cecum <coughs> attaching the vermiform appendix and <coughs> this appendix is twisted coil tube and the length of this coil tube that is appendix is 8 cm that is 3 in and this coil tube which is twisted one is known as appendix or the vermiform appendix vermiform means worm shape appendix meaning appendage so this was the eighth point i am showing you this is also very important figure for you you go through all the names prepare all the names now the ninth point now in the ninth point we are talking about the meso appendix so first of all this one this is the this is the vermiform appendix and with this one form appendix this part this yellow color part 
is attached so what is this yellow color region so this part is known as <coughs> meso appendix and what is meso appendix mesentery of the appendix is known as meso appendix so this is the meso this part is the meso appendix and what this meso appendix is doing what is the role this meso appendix is playing so meso appendix attaches or joins the appendix to the inferior part of the mesentery of the ilium so with the help of meso appendix vermiform appendix joins with the mesentery of the ilium the inferior part that is the meaning of this ninth point moving on the tenth point this is the tenth point now the open end of cecum merge with or joins with the long tube and this long tube is known as the colon so in the figure let me show you this is the cecum okay and it is joining with the long tube so this long tube is known as the colon colon means passage of food and this colon is divided into ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and the sigmoid colon so in the figure i am showing you this one this part this is the ascending colon then this one this one is the transverse colon you follow the arrow then descending colon this one and finally we are having sigmoid sigmoid colon so colon is having four region or we can say the entire colon is divided into four different part ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and the sigmoid colon this was the 10th point now moving on the 11th point <clears throat> this is the 11th point <clears throat> ascending and descending colon are retroperitoneal and transverse and sigmoid colon they are not retroperitoneal the meaning of retroperitoneal so you find the meaning in those pages that i have given to you do you read the all three pages about the peritoneum then this figure moving on the 12th point now as the name suggest true to its name the ascending colon ascends on the 
right side of the abdomen so it is projecting upwards you see it is ascending so this is the this one this side is the right side of the abdomen and this one side is the left side of the abdomen so here you see the ascending colon is ascending in the right abdomen so true to its name and where it is reaching this ascending colon inferior surface of the liver so that means liver is somewhere over here the liver is present so just inferior to the liver ascending colon is present then this ascending colon turns abruptly abruptly means suddenly immediately it is making a turn to the left side and the curve part of the colon the turning part of the colon is known as the right colic flexure or the hepatic flexure so here this was the this was the ascending colon and here you see it is turning it is turning abruptly suddenly it has turned so this turn part this part is known as the right colic flexure or the hepatic flexure so this was the 12th point now the point number 13 now the colon continues across the abdomen and now this colon is extending it is elongated from right side and now it is extended to the left side of the abdomen so between right and left abdomen the colon which is present that part is known as the transverse colon so this is the third point transverse colon uh, 13th point transverse colon now moving on the 14th point now in the 14th point what they are writing that that's this is the transverse colon and here here you see they have opened some part of the transverse colon and now again again this transverse colon is making turn abruptly so this turning part of the colon now known as left colic flexure and after the left colic flexure once again the colon begins but this time the colon is descending so this is known as the descending colon and where up to where this is passing so passes inferiorly to the level of iliac crest as the descending colon okay so point number 14 is about the left colic flexure and the descending colon now point number 15 Point number 15 we are discussing about sigmoid sigmoid colon so sigmoid sigmoid colon is S shape 
from where it is beginning so begins near the left iliac crest where this sigmoid colon is extending so it project medially to the midline midline means <coughs> the longitudinal axis which is present in the middle of our body that is midline so this sigmoid colon begins near the left iliac crest and it is extended medially to the midline then this sigmoid colon is ending it is terminating as the rectum so sigmoid here yeah, sigmoid colon terminates into rectum so this is the rectum and where this sigmoid colon is present in the body so it is located it is situated at about the level of the third sacral vertebra now moving on the 16th point now in the 16th point we are discussing about the rectum so here you see this one is the rectum now the rectum is the terminal part of the GI track the end part or the final part of the GI track and it is having length of 20 centimeter that is 8 inch where it is present in the body anterior to the sacrum and coccyx the rectum is present now the terminal 2-3 centimeter or the terminal 1 inch of the rectum is known as the anal canal so here this terminal 1 inch portion is known as the anal canal point number 17 now here you see anal canal is shown and anus you see where the black arrow is going so this is the this is the anus now The mucous membrane of the anal canal, this one, is arranged in the longitudinal folds. So here you see these are all longitudinal folds. And what is the name of this fold? So this fold are known as anal columns. So, anal columns. This, uh, these are the anal. This all are the anal columns. And what is present in this anal columns? So, anal column contain a network of arteries and veins. Moving on, point number 18. Now, the opening of the anal canal to the exterior of the body is known as the anus. So, this part is the anus. And this anus is guarded by valves wall is present internally wall is present one wall is present internally another is present externally so anus 
is guarded by valve the internal one is known as the internal anal spincher which is made up of smooth muscle and it is in voluntary so first of all i am showing you internal anal spincher internal anal spincher made up of smooth muscle it is involuntary that means in the contraction and relaxation of this wall we are not having <coughs> the control of our cautious mind okay and then the external anal spincher so first i am showing you external anal spincher so this are the external anal spincher and this external anal spincher they are made up of skeletal muscle so these are the voluntary that means contraction and relaxation is in our control of this wall that is the meaning of this thing now the last point of our discussion now both the spincher normally this spincher keep the anus close and when we are expelling the fecus out from the body that time both this wall they are opening the anus and we are able to eliminate the fecus from the body so that is the role this spincher is playing so before i wind up this presentation lecture i would like to show you this figure okay this then this figure so with this we have completed <coughs> the presentation lecture on the anatomy of the large intestine i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and also in your studies my name is manish koshti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste